Namo Didafa. Thank you for joining me for our daily practice check-in. Listen, listen, listen. This beautiful sound calls us back to our true home. The third mindfulness training. Aware of the suffering caused by sexual misconduct, I vow to cultivate responsibility and learn ways to protect the safety and integrity of individuals, couples, families, and society. I'm determined not to engage in sexual relations without love and a long-term commitment. To preserve the happiness of myself and others, I'm determined to respect my commitments and the commitments of others. I will do everything in my power to protect children from sexual abuse to prevent couples and families from being broken by sexual misconduct. For our Dharma lessons, we're reading Ajahn Muninda's book, Unexpected Freedom. Today we're concluding a chapter on devotion and prayer with a section on silent prayer. So I think prayer does have an important place in Theravada Buddhism. This way is about getting to know the nature of our own being so that we're at one with our hearts and attentive to its truest longings. The heart longs to return to its original condition of purity. To become more conscious of that dimension of our heart is an important point of practice. The reflections and ritual verses of contemplations that we all recite together in the monastery are a safe place to start to pray. Then if we feel inclined, we can begin to say our own words. What does your heart want to say? When we kneel before the shrine, that which symbolizes perfect wisdom, perfect compassion, and perfect freedom for us, and we express our good wishes for all beings, the bronze statue, beautiful and serene as it is, is not listening to us. We are not asking the Buddha to grant us any favors. Rather, beholding an image of the Buddha helps configure the divine principle in our minds and creates the appropriate inner space, a sacred place, in which we feel totally free to speak and in which we can feel perfectly received. There is a touching passage in One Dharma by Joseph Goldstein, he refers to an interview with Mother Teresa in which the interviewer asked, when, when you pray, what do you say to God? I don't say anything, she said. I just listen. Well, what does God say to you? God just listens. There was a pause in the interview and she added, and if you don't understand that, I'm afraid I can't help you. That's the essence of it. We all have within us the faculty of intuition, which, if we listen to it, can guide us towards our true home where we trust that unshakable peace, where we trust that unshakable peace lies. Our hearts already know the way. Prayer and devotion put us in touch with the heart and its natural wisdom, allowing it to gently lead us on that journey. Another question this evening asked, being here on retreat, I've remembered what I had forgotten about being present. And now I'm afraid that when I leave here, I'm going to forget it again and become caught up in all the many responsibilities and challenges. How can I effectively remember this presence? I think prayer is one way of remembering. If we wish, we can quietly, reverently offer up this prayer. May the goodness of my practice support me in my aspirations to be present in every moment of my day, no matter what's going on. Prayer helps. I'm grateful for the questions you have asked this evening. May all beings be well, may all beings be happy, may all beings be peaceful. Namo Adidafa. Thanks so much for joining me today.